Hey there guys, this is Dave again, and as promised we're going to be talking about tessellation. I know I promised you distance-based tessellation, but as a matter of fact this is a very complex um, topic. So I decided first of all we're going to talk about basic tessellation, so it doesn't change at all. Like, here's the example for the distance-based tessellation, and this mesh stays the same. But it's best for the start to put it into two separate tutorials. Okay, so we're going to learn how to create a material with basic tessellation. Uh, as you can see here, we will be able to change a couple of values. So first of all, we can set tessellation to on and off. So zero is off, one is on, of course. And we can set the uh, change the depth effect of it and change the iteration number. I'm gonna explain to you later what it does, but I guess you can see pretty well. It just says how detailed uh, the object will be. Okay, so we don't want to save this one. We're just gonna open our latest project, which we call the Material Shua O. I <laughs> know I typed it wrong. So I'm gonna open that up. If you haven't gone through my previous tutorial, it's not a problem at all, but uh, not a problem at all. I'm sorry it's 2 a.m. in the morning, I'm a bit confused, kind of like. So if you don't have our latest material, simply go into the textures folder, search for cobbles, cobblestone, and cobblestone rough, d and underscore n. These are the two textures we're using. Okay, we're gonna open our uh, material, which we called, uh, okay, so delete this. I created this uh, before as a test. So we're gonna go to a perfect material main, and we're gonna create a copy. And we're gonna call this tessellation, or just test base. Okay, so this is our new material, and this will be having the effect of the tessellation. Okay, so the best way to actually view your tessellated object is using a shape. So any any mesh you actually like. Just put it in the scene, go to materials, and apply this material to the object. So you can see right within the editor uh, how the result will look like. Okay, so Tessellation. Um, first of all, what is tessellation? Tessellation of a flat surface is actually tiling the surface. So more polygons are added within one polygon, so uh, it's way more detailed and the homogeneity actually increases. And you can use this using a height map to change the shape of the object. But before we can do anything with, the, uh, with our material, we gotta change its properties. So we go into the perfect material text space and under the details panel we scroll down and there you have a tessellation. So first you have to activate tessellation. We're gonna choose flat tessellation. Um, triangle based tessellation costs more performance and it's actually able to reshape the mesh. Then we wanna check enable crack free displacement. Um, this is actually very important to check. Because if you don't use it and you apply your material on a complex mesh and the UV seams aren't perfectly matched, then small cracks will appear. This was a huge problem within the UDK, but here it's fixed pretty well. So we're gonna enable crack free displacement. So enable crack. Yeah, there we have it. Okay. Um, okay, so first of all, we're gonna just tessellate the object. So I'm gonna tile its polygons. So we create a scale parameter. I'm going to call this one iterations. And we're going to set it to 0 or 2. So as I figured, or I've done a few tests, and 0 seems to be the lowest number and 2 the highest number. So we're going to set it to 2. And we go in here, go to the uh, wireframe mode. As you can see, it's already tessellated, and if we now plug this, oh wait a second, we're gonna plug this into the uh, tessellation multiplier. 
save it it has the uh, maximum value but now what we can do because it's already set to 2 if you just enable tessellation now we can set it to 0 and once it's done compiling and saving you can see I said you can see that it's not tessellated so it's actually just our base shape okay so I'm just gonna set it away let's set it again to 2 which is a great value and now for the work displacement um, first of all copy paste or just duplicate this normal map and now we're gonna test if we can just simply uh, use it for the world displacement so we're gonna set it with our RGB and yeah it's kinda weird so why is it weird um, what you need for a world displacement map to work is it has it's gotta have white and black information so what we can do is we can go into and click on our map go into the material expression texture base texture double click it and right here in the view we can uncheck red green blue and go into the alpha channel and this is a perfect tessellation map because white means it's high and black means it's low so we can use this information and close it and put this into the world displacement and the effect should be very subtle so why is it barely noticeable because we haven't set the height actually so it's just a base height and if we want to be able to change it we can well either change the texture itself or we can simply add a multiply drag our alpha channel into the A create another scalar parameter and we're gonna call this height and we can plug this into the B channel and let's say we set it to 10 which is pretty much a high value and go to the work displacement and as you can see now it's working but it's not working correctly because it's only tessellating and extruding these uh, parts of the mesh into one direction and yeah it's not very perfect so what we need to change this is actually go to right click search for vertex and go into the coordinates vertex normal um, WS and this actually enables us to uh, prevent this I don't know how it works exactly um, I just know it works so set another multiply and multiply the vertex normal with our previous multiply and now we set this into the world displacement and the perfect should be uh, the the effect should be working great as you can see yeah working properly okay so actually now we can change the value we can add another group that we're gonna call tessellation of course we can set the iterations also to tessellation and this would be our material or this could be our material um, you can play with it and what I just want to do right now is I want to create another parameter that switches the tessellation on and off um, so that's what we're gonna create right now so first of all I'm gonna set this so it's a bit more understandable so what we're also gonna do is we're gonna delete these this normal map parameter and we're gonna plug the parameter of a former one right into multiply a right into multiply a I said yeah <laughs> now it's working correctly okay so now we have this and uh, now we're gonna add the value that's gonna change if it's activated or if it's not activated so we're gonna create another scalar parameter and when we're gonna call this tessellation on off and now we need two lerps we used a lerp before which is actually blending between a and b 
And the alpha is actually a number between uh, 0 and 1. 0 means A will be applied, 1 means B will be applied. So we need two loops. And we're going to start with the iteration. So if tessellation will be deactivated, tessellation, the iteration should be 0. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to call uh, create a constant vector, or just simply go to constant and drag and drop this in. Zero is perfect, so we're going to plug this into a because if it's this value is zero, then a will be applied. If this value is one, this value will be applied. And the same we're going to do for this lerp, but this time we're going to use a constant three vector. And zero 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 is great. So we're going to plug this into A. And we're going to plug this result into B. And again, plug this tessellation on and off value into the alpha. Now we just reconnect these two. So the first one into word displacement. The second one into tessellation multiplier. As you can see, um, there is no effect going on. Now if we set this value to let's say 1, which is activated, it's working properly. But to prevent actually to uh, increase the number too much, let's say 10, give it a 10, so there's only 0 and 1 available, we can use a so-called clamp. So right click on it and type in clamp. And clamp is actually giving it a minimum and a maximum value. So we're gonna just plug our tessellation on and off into the clamp. The minimum value is set to zero, which is perfect, and the maximum is set to zero. So it's yeah, just what we need. And this we're gonna plug into the alpha again. And there we have it, our actually perfect material. We can now just set the tessellation group tessellation on and off to another group and I'm gonna set it to local so within the local um, grouping you can activate and deactivate the tessellation okay so now you can just uh, play with it play with the values and this is pretty much our material right now so we're gonna save it and once we saved it I'm gonna close it and you can see here we have our tessellated object. If we go back to the lit mode, it looks pretty cool. So which is one thing left to do is I want to create a instance. So create a material instance. And this will be called we can just leave it like that. It doesn't matter. Okay, now if we apply this and we click on it, double click on it, you can see within our groups we have our local. And we can set tessellation to off and it will be applied immediately to our object and we set it to one it's working and the same goes for the uh, tessellation values which is the height we can uh, let's say crank up for 10 which is pretty much a high amount back to three and the iterations we can set to let's say zero which is no effect at all we can go to the wireframe mode and we can see the higher the number the more iterations there will be and choose the maximum mode okay so this is our material and it works perfectly so i hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial next time we'll be talking about the promised distance based tessellation uh, to save performance especially and so we'll see you guys next time Bye.